Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Step, step, step. Do you know how many steps your warehouse workers are taking a day? When your workers are walking, you're losing money. Endless trips to the printer or computer add up fast. Newcastle's mobile industrial carts with integrated power eliminate the walking to stationary printers and computers, keeping workers focused on high value tasks. Often, doubling their output. Thousands of powered cart installations, including ones at the new warehouse's own micro fulfillment center and in my previous jobs, prove that Newcastle customers get more done and save money. To learn more, head to newcastlesys.com. That's newcastlesys.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast. I'm here at Manifest 2023, and I'm joined by Steve Denton of Where to Go, CEO over there. Uh, Steve's going to tell us a little bit about Where to Go, his thoughts on Manifest 2023, and a big announcement that they did here at the show with Gap, and kind of how that's kind of going to change a little bit the, the way that warehousing kind of works and, and some of those things. So, Steve, thanks for joining me here. How, how are you doing so far? This is the last day of the show. I'm great, Kevin. Thanks for the time, man. It's good to see you. And, uh, yeah. Show's good, busy, obviously a lot of interest in the space, you know, just by the sheer volume of people that are here, the, yeah. the number of exhibitors, the number of attendees, like clearly, you know, a rapidly expanding and evolving space. So yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very interesting just to see like just the different types of technologies and solutions that are coming out as well here at the show. So tell us a little bit about where to go for sure. maybe people that are not so familiar with what you guys do. Yeah, so I'll give you the quick one. Right? Sure. Yeah, so, yeah. so think about where to go, like you think about Uber, you think about Airbnb. So mm-hmm. Instead of connecting people who need rides with people who have cars or people who want to stay in places or people who want to stay in those places, Yeah. Um, we've threaded together a, a network of warehouses, um, okay. 45 uh, yeah. after today across the country right. that are made up of 3PLs, made up of great operating partners, mm. made up of folks like Quiet Logistics, and, right. and and as we announced today, The Gap, which we'll talk about. Yeah. But we've connected up this supply chain and these logistics capabilities, mm-hmm. 45 warehouses strong, on one common technology platform. Mm. Right? So regardless of the WMS system that they're using, we've just connected into those so that it's all seamlessly pulled together on, on one platform. Yeah. And then what that allows us to do is go out to merchants, and typically we work in that, what I like to call the fat middle. Like you're doing okay. five million of yeah, those merchandise yeah. sales to 250 million, and offer them an enterprise grade supply chain mm-hmm. where they can access the supply of quality supply okay. using our platform through one integration with us and achieve an Amazon-like SFP two-day footprint. Yeah get the optionality and the reason we have 45 of them is like some warehouses are great at kidding some are good at e-com some are good yeah. at big and bulky you know some are good at cold chain or temp control right so it's not just a footprint to forward stage your inventory to get a one to two day ground footprint but it's also capabilities hmm. capacity right. and flex yeah so that's what we do that's what we provide and, and the unique thing about our model is really three things one it's a technology led company okay so it's all technology driven two it provides optionality at scale, so it's all pay-as-you-go model. Right. So you're not signing five-year contracts, three-year contracts, it's you pay for what you use. Yeah. And then lastly, it's all carbon neutral. So oh, okay. when we built right. our model, and we built our pricing out, 
we knew it was important to SMBs yeah. and their customers yeah, to have a sustainable supply chain. Mm. So the way we've built it, the way we priced it, is we buy the carbon credits for everything that goes through our network. Mm. So the merchants that work with us offer a green shipping solution. Okay. So, so those are three key tenets of what we do, mm -hmm. and that's a little bit about us at where to go. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really interesting because, it, like you said, you're kind of targeting that small to medium-sized business, and you're able to to give them better power in a sense in their supply chain. And tell us a little bit about maybe how it, you guys have helped. Maybe I don't have to say maybe a specific brand, but sure. like a, a smaller to medium-sized business really really grow by giving them a more robust supply chain. Sure. Let's talk about a, a small one, and then let's talk sure. about a big one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's do it. So, great company that works with us, O2 Water. Okay. So. It's a, it's a water drink that's infused with extra oxygen. Don't ask me how that happens. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you get extra O and H2O. But yeah, yeah, they figured we, it we out. just ship it, yeah. yeah. Right, but it's, it's a replenishment which helps you recover from workouts quicker. Okay. Right, based out in Ohio, you know, this, that's a merchant that got peddling with us. Yeah. And they sold their products through gyms and spas and, mm. and studios. Yeah. And when the pandemic hit, their whole, 95% of their business shut down. Oh, right? wow. Gyms weren't yeah. open, spas weren't open, oh, right, studios right. weren't yeah. open. So they had to make this really quick pivot to D to C. Mm. So when they had to make that pivot, we had to make that pivot with their supply chain. Because if you yeah. have a supply chain set up for like, you know, LTL, truckload shipments, mm -hmm. and now you're gonna pivot to a onesie twosie, you know, right. residential delivery, it's, it's just, it's different pack setup, the whole thing. Yeah. So having the flexibility of actually moving them into other warehouses, or flex up as their volume grew, yeah. allowed them to grow, mm. and it allowed us to grow with them, and they were not dragging us forward. Right. Like they needed to change, so overnight, they went from 95% B2B yeah. to 95% D2C. Oh, wow. And we had to make that pivot with Yeah, them. huge change, yeah. And we had the flexibility and the scale to be able to do that. Mm. And now that company is off to the races, they brought in incremental funding, you can find them all over the place. Yeah, and yeah. Dave Klein and the guys there are just great partners, and. Mm. And as their business has changed, we flexed up. Yeah. On the flip side of that, some folks have had to flex down. Okay. Because they maybe weren't in favor yeah. of, of, of COVID shopping patterns. Mm. So they weren't stuck with warehouse leases that they didn't, you know, that they had to pay for. They weren't stuck with labor they had to lay off. Yeah. It's all in a flexible model. On the enterprise side, so we work with Colgate. Okay. And we don't do their supply chain, but we do their company store. Interesting. So okay. think about all the employees that yeah. want to shop. The their supply chain's not set up to do that. Their supply yeah, yeah. chain's set up to do, you know, things into DCs for right. large consumer grocery companies mm -hmm. and things like that. So, with the when the employees want to shop, they yeah. shop from the company store. Interesting. We power that. Okay. So it's just having that flexibility and, and being technology led on that gives you the opportunity to help those folks expand their business, grow, or in some cases shrink. Yeah. Without carrying all those costs. Hmm. Very interesting, and I, mm -hmm. I love the fact of the or the case of the O2 water, yeah. like you said, because it it shows, especially as you know, even coming out of the pandemic, we still like there was like a lot of e-commerce brands born too as well, 100%. and it shows just the value of having a good partner that can give you that that strength in the supply chain, because a lot of companies and. You know, a lot of founders of, of brands, they they don't come from like a supply chain background. I mean, they right. don't they don't really have the idea of how to get that going. And if they tried to do that on their own, I'm sure they would struggle really probably, right? Are you a gamer? Am I a gamer? Yeah. No, not really. So, so <laughs> Cephal Affair has this game called okay. Frosthaven that okay. just came out. It's huge. Yeah. And you talk about a complex pro So they did a crowdfunding. It's their second game. Sure. Big hit in the gaming community. They yeah. did a crowdfunding campaign years ago mm -hmm. where you invested in the company, but you also bought the game. Okay. So, Interesting. Brilliant strategy. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, all of these pieces were coming in. Thirty-five pound game board coming in from China. You got accessories coming in from Bulgaria. You got other folks oh, things okay. coming in from other countries. And that all came into the country in November. Mm. It needed to be turned around. Quick. And eight hundred thousand yeah. of those things out and delivered by Christmas. Oh, and wow. not just in the United States, but Australia and the UK yeah. and the EU. So it's all coming in from containers, from multiple ports, from mm -hmm. multiple origins, yeah, yeah. getting aggregated and assembled, yeah. and then out. And it's just a level of complexity that a company like that couldn't handle. Yeah, absolutely. Because they focus on the things they're good at. Yeah. Making great games, mm -hmm. engaging a great community, doing great marketing, yeah. great customer service. And then they turn that complexity of supply chain over to a company like ours. So yeah. it's great to be able to enable these companies to compete and win. Mm -hmm. 
and level that playing field? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think having, you know, even now, I mean, I think businesses see more and more that like having a, a very strong supply chain is like a competitive advantage in, in a sense, right? So, so being able to partner with somebody like where to go uh, allows you to, to kind of do that. Um, so speaking Great of partnerships, stat, yeah. Great stat yeah. from that. During the pandemic, 65% of consumers reported they bought from a brand they'd never done business with before. So really? think about uh, that first buy to the yeah. Apple, new yeah. customer acquisition. I'm giving you a shot. Maybe early in the pandemic, because you're the only one that had something, yeah. or my shopping pattern shifted, and things have just changed. But 65% of consumers buying from someone they never did business with before. If your supply chain yeah. is not transparent, timely, predictable, seamless returns, yeah. cost effective, you get one bite of the apple on that, and yeah. you can get a repeat customer. So. It's so tied to commerce oh, yeah. that you can't have one without the other, yeah. and it's so critical on that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a great point too, because you know you look at just even myself, you know, personal as a customer. Like I, you know, if I can't get something in you know the time that I, I need it in, like it's it's frustrating. I'm going to go somewhere else, pretty yeah. much. And you know, I think a lot of us are probably a, a you know offender of doing that. But yeah. so I mean, it just to your point, like it just makes sense to be able to, to have that robust supply chain and, yeah. and be able to to do everything your customer is expecting of you to do. Um, so. You also now at the show here, yeah. you, you announced a partnership with Gap. So tell us a little bit about that and, and what that entails. Yeah, really excited to partner with you know, Gap's logistics platform. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone knows the Gap. I don't need to explain that portfolio. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. The Gap. But, you know, they've also got what I like to refer to as a cathedral of a supply chain. I mean, they've got, yeah. you know, eight warehouses in this country that yeah. are most modern. Automated. They're big on automation. Automated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've done so much work there, invested yeah. so much. It's it's a cathedral. Mm. If you go to church, it's basically it's built for Christmas Sunday or Christmas <laughs> Day and Easter Sunday. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Right. But the challenge with that is, like, church, you don't have that many people in there every day. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they built this cathedral, and there's some capacity there they wanted to make available. Okay. And they needed a partner that yeah. could be the technology integrator be the middle person as far as mm. privacy and data, be yeah. the commercial engine. And so we started working with them a while ago when they decided they wanted to monetize 500,000 to a million units a day they wanted to make available in the market. Interesting. So we spent you know, a good six months doing the integrations yeah. so when we connect with customers, they're less than 30 days. So mm. we've integrated into their technology and their WMS systems. And now what we announced today is we can go out to merchants. So think about these fast growing apparel merchants that you see on Instagram. Right, yeah. Right, or you yeah. see in any of your social feeds that are growing wicked fast, like how yeah. Rothy started or Seven Diamonds. Yeah. And they've outgrown their supply chain, the warehouse that they've got next to where they yeah. started. You know, 74% of all SMBs report they have a warehouse. Yeah. But 90% of them, because we just did a study in the fourth quarter of 2000 SMBs on the okay. future fulfillment, 90% of them say, hey, I would be willing to co-locate with another retailer or another partner and let them do the distribution as long as we had the right technology. Interesting, yeah. So the market is moving this way. Right. Okay, I want to kind of get out of these fixed assets. Capital is expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not as cheap to borrow money. Yeah. And they're moving in these co-warehouse models. And the gap was such a great extension for us because it mm -hmm. opened up apparel and soft yeah. goods and a ton of automation. So now you can go have a conversation with company in Santa Barbara like Ace Rivington, yeah. probably don't know, but, but good people, yeah. and, um, <laughs> and allow them to go into a fulfillment network that is the GAPS fulfillment network, and get right. that automation, okay. get that speed, get that scale, yeah. and be able to offer their customers the same type of footprint and the same type of delivery experience mm. that the GAP delivers to their customers at Old Navy and Atlanta and Banana Republic and the GAP. Yeah. So, and they do it by connecting to us. We've already got the connections. We sit in the middle and manage the services, manage the tech, mm. manage the payments, yeah. manage the customer experience so they can do that. So it's a great win for not just where to go, but yeah, yeah. any mid-market apparel merchant out there yeah. that wants to take advantage of that kind of supply chain yeah. and, and have access to something they would never have access to on their own. Absolutely, yeah. They can yeah. do that technology integration, and it's, just, it's too yeah. hard for them. Yeah, it would be too much. So we too simplify. Much. So we're yeah. excited about it. Gap's excited about it. You know, Gap's a longtime UPS customer. Yeah. We're owned by UPS. Right, we came right, out of an yeah. incubation lab there. Mm -hmm. And so couldn't be more thrilled about that for ourselves, but also for the industry. Like, yeah. enabling these SMBs to compete and win 
is really what it's all about for us. Yeah, yeah, I think that's huge. And it, it's interesting how, like your study said, like that people are, are interested in now, like, you know, sharing spaces and sharing even like resources and things like yeah. that. Whereas I think, you know, you think way back, right? It was like always like, uh, no, like we're not giving away the, the secret sauce, right? right? Or anything. But we see these things happening and obviously your partnership with Gap and you talked about, you know, working with quiet platforms yep. and mm-hmm. obviously, you know, they had the huge announcement, yep. right? With 100%. American Eagle. Yep. So, I mean, how do you see that kind of changing the idea of the, the supply chain and, and how it'll be going into the future? One thing, look, I think like anything, right? In a competitive space, right? Yeah. Best outcomes, best value. Right. <laughs> wins. Yeah. Um, and you, you got to stay in front of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, think about Saturday. Yeah. Right. It used to be a bonus if you worked on Saturdays. Now right. it's required. Yeah. Right. Like if you're not working Saturday, that's table stakes. Like, yeah. You need Saturday fulfillment. Yeah. So that's just an evolution. It's table stakes. Now, yeah. Right? yeah. That was like all really nice to have like two, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So. That evolution just keeps pushing the industry forward, and mm. by using data and technology and automation, yeah. but then also getting on the front foot and taking risks and saying, hey, maybe there's not enough volume to justify it, but it will be. Right. So if you think about that, it's just, we keep pushing each other. Mm-hmm. So I think, look, I think the future fulfillment, candidly, for the asset, like, enterprise is a little different. Yeah. But they're aggregating and co-sharing as well now. Mm-hmm. But I think when you think about the mid-market, the SMB, I think the days of owning your own warehouses are really yeah. coming to an end. Because you can just yeah. go faster yeah. and have access to better technology and right. candidly better rates. Yeah. Because you're going to be aggregated with scale. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I think the key to making it work is, and the same thing retailers face, how do you get personalization at scale? Mm. So if I can get you scale, yeah. but still treat you and you're special and you're got personalized, like yeah. that's the win. Because if you get scale without personalization, then it's never going to work. Yeah. So yeah. partnerships like this, you'll see more and more of these because mm. people have overbuilt capacity. Yeah. And those that maybe didn't overbuild it, but they generated capacity because they've been so efficient with robotics right. and automation. Yeah. You don't monetize that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it makes a lot of sense because you are seeing... A lot of different things pop up as well, just like even like marketplaces and stuff where, you know, shippers have, you know, a couple thousand square feet and they're just throwing it out there like, oh, can we bring something in? Whereas I think, you know, talking, going back to the, you know, the secret sauce idea, but it's like, I feel like in the past, you know, people were like, oh, well, you know, we don't want anybody else to to mix in. But now it seems like, I mean, it makes total sense to be able to to monetize that, like you said, and and use a platform like yours to do something like that as well. I think think on the consumer experience, though, the thing that's table stakes has got to be good service yeah, and certainty, absolutely. right? Yeah. So we all talked about speed over the last couple of years. Everyone was rushing for that Amazon Prime-like experience. Yeah. And we can, we can do that. We all can get there. But now, equally important as for you as a consumer, yeah. certainty might be as important as speed. Mm, right. And a, a carbon-neutral option, a sustainable option. Yeah. Because we see more and more consumers, 68% said, if you don't have a sustainable option, yeah. you might not be in the consideration set. Mm, yeah. So... Optionality is really critical yeah. for merchants to offer their customers same day, pick up in store, overnight, two day, sustainable green option. Right. So consumers want optionality. Yeah. They want green choices. And equally important, they want certainty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting insights from you here, Steve. And I mm-hmm. appreciate you joining me. And yeah, I, yeah. I'm curious, you know, before we wrap our conversation here, we're at Manifest. So what, what do you think is like the one biggest takeaway you took away from the show? Wow. So much, well, the diversity of companies. Okay, yeah. So you had to say one. So yeah. one. <laughs> the diversity of companies yeah. in there, robotics companies, automation companies, right. same-day delivery companies, business analytics and intelligence companies, WMS, orchestration, carriers. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's trucks in there, man. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. full-blown trucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just the diversity of yeah. offerings and services that are in that room is incredible. And it just yeah. shows you how complex mm. this industry is. Yeah. And, um, and simplifying that's really important because <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of complexity and diversity in oh, there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I can only imagine like, yeah. how someone's head spinning if they're yeah. managing a global supply chain. Yeah. So <laughs> fascinating, but really proud of it and great to see, great to see the energy and the attendance. And yeah. It's awesome.
Yeah, definitely. And I, I think to your your point, you know, kind of going back to our, our conversation, right? You know, the diversity in there, I think, is just a testament to the power of the partnerships in our in our world, you know, which you guys are, are focused on. So, really great to talk to you, Steve. Uh, appreciate you coming on the show. And if people want to learn more about where to go, how can they do that? Yeah, so where to go is spelled like where, W-A-R-E, yeah. <laughs> the number right. two, and then go, dot, yeah. dot com. So that's our website, and you can follow us on Instagram. I think I think we got a good gram feed. Oh, yeah? I think we okay. do. We'll I think check we out the gram. I think right. the gram. I think our gram is pretty good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, our LinkedIn is strong. Yeah. And you can always reach out to me at steve.detton at wheretogo.com. All right, great. And we'll put that information at the new warehouse.com as well. So, Steve, awesome. thank you so much for uh, joining me on the show. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.